In this video, I am going to present 10 critical pull shots that every pool player needs to know how to execute to effectively escape difficult situations on the table. I will show and explain every possible way to escape every situation and also determine difficulty of them. But before we start, be sure to leave a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button because I make new video every week so you can't miss any of them. In the first situation we have 8 ball layout where we have to play easy 4 ball. But the main problem in this situation is fact that 8 ball is possible to play only into the bottom right corner pocket because 9 ball blocks possibility to pot 8 ball into the top right corner. If we pot 4 ball and hit the cue ball with top spin, then as you can see it is impossible to end in correct place. So in this situation we have actually one clear option to create good position for the 8 ball. We need to hit the cue ball slightly below its center and apply right hand English. The key in this shot is to hit right long rail just before the corner pocket, which makes this shot very difficult to control. If we hit the cue ball too low, then it will not have enough speed to reach position area. But if we hit it too high, then we're scratching in the corner pocket. Very important in this shot is to apply a lot of English, because right rotation causes the cue ball to go faster after contact with rails, make it possible to create perfect position for the 8 ball. In the next example we face very uncomfortable situation where the 9 ball is placed very close to the middle pocket, but the current position of the cue ball makes it impossible to play a cut shot into the middle pocket, and additionally if we try to put the 9 ball into the corner pocket, then we are scratching in the middle. So in this case we should try to play safety shot and we have several options to choose from. The first one is very natural hit with low speed and center ball to leave the cue ball near the middle pocket and 9 ball on the bottom short rail, but after this shot we give the initiative to the opponent to play a much more difficult safety shot. In the second way we can just slightly push the cue ball and try to hide it behind the jaw of the middle pocket, but there is some risk that we can misjudge the contact between balls and scratch in the middle pocket. In the third option we can put much more pressure on our opponent and try to leave the cue ball on the bottom short rail while the 9 ball using 4 or 5 rails and on the top short rail and our opponent has long difficult shot. The next option requires from us to hit the 9 ball very thin on the left side and use both long rails to put the 9 ball on the bottom short rail while the cue ball going to the top half of the table and ends on the top short rail. I said that we are forced to play safety shot, but there is one more option which allow us to put the 9 ball into the bottom corner. In this option we need to elevate our cue stick bit higher and hit the cue ball with center ball and a lot of speed. After this hit, cue ball jumps after contact with the 9 ball and hits the back of the pocket and comes back on the table. This option is very risky and difficult to execute than the previous examples and I personally would choose third option where we use more rails to leave very difficult shot for our opponent, because this approach have highest percentage that our opponent will make a mistake in next shot. In the following example we have to play 4 ball and make position for the 9 ball which is on the other side of the table. The main problem in this situation is fact that 4 ball and cue ball are frozen to the same short rail so we don't have an angle to transfer the cue ball for the 9 ball. In the first option we need to aim 4 ball on full contact with center ball on the cue ball, and then we need to apply low right hand English to the cue ball using backhand English system, so in this case we need to move our grip without moving our bridge. During this shot we need to cheat the pocket a bit and create additional angle which causes the cue ball to curve and after contact with long rail go towards the left side of the table with perfect position for the 9 ball. In the second option we need to use same aiming using backhand English system, but this time we need to apply top left hand English to transfer the cue ball to the bottom right side of the table. Of course the choice of right option should depend on which part of the table we need to make position for the 9 ball. But if it is not important, then I would personally choose the option where I had to use top left hand English, because this shot didn't require to use a lot of speed. And now we are jumping to the next example where we have another situation where only 9 ball is on the table, 
but this time in frozen position with bottom short wheel, while the cubo is located in the middle of the table. In the first option we can just hit the cubo with low speed and with bit of left hand English to leave balls on the opposite long rails. But with this approach we leave possibility to play bank shot for our opponent. In the following option we can hit the cubo on the 9 ball with half contact and apply a lot of right hand English to leave the 9 ball on the top short rail while the cubo stay in the bottom area of the table. And there are two more options where we can try to pull the 9 ball and in the first one we can cause the 9 ball to make contact with free rails and go into the right middle pocket. This is very safe option because if we miss the 9 ball, then it goes to the bottom half of the table while the QO ends in the top area. In the second option, we can try to put the 9 ball into the bottom left corner pocket, so in this case we need to apply a lot of right hand English and hit bottom short rail first. After this contact, QO due to apply it English pushes the 9 ball towards the pocket but there is some risk that we can scratch in the top left corner pocket, so in my opinion I personally would like to choose the previous option, because if we miss this shot then we can leave our opponent with difficult situation. In the following example we have another very uncomfortable situation which may look very easy, but the reality is different. As you can see we have final 9 ball to play and both balls are frozen to the same long rail, and this is the crucial information. If we try to hit the 9 ball at this ghost ball point using center ball, then in most cases you miss the 9 ball and this happened because cue ball hits rail first and this causes wrong contact with the 9 ball. And there is one option to put the 9 ball without big problems and this time we need to use front hand English system. So in this case in first step you need to aim 9 ball using center ball and then apply left hand English using front hand English system, so we need to move our bridge without moving our grip. And the key will be to apply low speed to the cue ball, because after this type of shot, cue ball initially deflects to the right, and then curves slightly and comes back to the correct line to hit the 9 ball at its ghost ball point. In the next example we encounter very common situation where we don't have direct access to the next ball, because there is other ball which partially blocks possibility to hit the object ball directly. If we try to play near the 9 ball, then we can see that we hit the 4 ball too thin, which causes mistake, or we hit the 9 ball first, which of course is a foul. But we can still put the 4 ball, but in this situation we need to play massive shot to cause the cue ball to curve and avoid contact with the 9 ball. To execute this shot correctly, we need to elevate our cue stick higher and apply right hand English. And the key to execute it correctly will be to apply correct speed to cause the cue ball to curve enough near the 9 ball and come back to the correct line and hit the 4 ball at its ghost ball point. And now we are moving to the next example of critical shot where we have very similar situation to the previous one, but this time 4 ball and 9 ball are touching together and are placed in such a way that if we hit the 4 ball as full as possible to avoid hitting the 9 ball first, then we are missing this shot because there is too little space to hit the 4 ball at its ghost ball point. And in this situation we will use one of the biggest factors in pool, the spin induced throw, to be able to steal pull the 4 ball. So in this case, to make 4 ball into the middle pocket, we need to apply a lot of right hand English and use low speed on the cue ball. The spin induced throw factor will push the 4 ball slightly to the left, which opens possibility to pull this ball. And the most difficult during this shot will be to find correct speed and to hit the 4 ball as full as possible to avoid making contact with the 9 ball first. In the 8th example we need to play 4 ball but the 9 ball is placed on the way to hit this ball directly. And this is very common situation where this time we can play very strong resave to put our opponent in difficult situation. To execute this shot correctly, we need to hit short rail first and then the 4 ball which will go to the top half of the table. This shot is not easy because we need to cast the cue ball to make full contact with the 4 ball. If we hit it too thin, then cue ball will go high or we can leave very easy 4 ball to play for our opponent. The key will be to find the correct point of contact with the rail and apply enough spin to stop the cue ball in place after contact with the 4 ball. We can of course try to pot this ball and in this case we can use one rail kicking system. In the first step we need to draw a line from the center point of the ghost ball of this shot to the rail's edge and this line needs to be parallel to the short rail. 
In the next step, we need to indicate another line but this time from point on the rail's edge to the midpoint between the cue ball and the ghost ball. And finally, if we move this line parallel on the cue ball, then we can see our final point on the rail's edge where we need to hit the cue ball. And really important during this shot will be to apply a bit of topspin and not too much speed because each higher amount of both factors will change cue ball's path after contact with the rail. And of course, we should choose between these two options depending on whether we want to play offensive or defensive. And let's move to the nymph example where as you can see we have very easy 4 ball to play but the next 9 ball is located in the other side of the table on the middle of the short hill. The main problem in this situation is fact that we don't have an angle on the 4 ball and additionally cue ball is very close to the long rail. So in this case we need to execute one rail kick shot to transfer the cue ball to the other side of the table. In the first step, we need to find the center point of the ghost ball of this shot and measure the distance between this point and short rail's edge. In the next step, we need to move this distance along the long rail and then we will see our final aiming point where we need to hit the cue ball. And again, very important will be speed and spin, because we need to apply a bit of top spin and not too much speed. Kubo, after contact with the short rail, hits the 4 ball from the different direction and go towards bottom area of the table to make very good position for the 9 ball. And at the end of this episode, I have for you very interesting situation where 4 ball and 9 ball are touching together and make a combination but not directly at the center of the pocket. And this information generates a big problem because if we try to make this combination, then we can see that the 9 ball falls towards the jaw of the pocket and we are not able to pot this ball. And this time we can again use the spin induced throw factor to change path of the 9 ball and pot it. To change final path of the 9 ball to the right, we need to hit the cue ball on the left side and apply a lot of left hand English. And of course this situation works in same way if we change direction of the combination to the right, but this time we need to hit on the right side and apply a lot of right hand English to slightly push the 9 ball to the correct direction. I hope you enjoyed this video and you will be able to leave a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button to be updated with videos like this. And now you can see these two videos which you definitely need to watch next. Thank you very much for watching and see you in the next video. Take care.